Hi, I'm Andries and I'm going to give you a high-level overview of our paper called Inclusive Rewards as a First Step Toward Multi-Agent Autocurricula. The competitive and cooperative forces of natural selection have driven the evolution of intelligence for many millions of years, eventually culminating in nature's vast biodiversity and the complexity of our human minds. In this paper, we present a novel multi-agent reinforcement learning framework inspired by the process of evolution. We assign a genotype to each agent, which consists of a sequence of genes and propose a reward function that optimizes for the fitness of the agent's genes. Since the genetic material of an agent can be present in other related agents as well, our reward function therefore not only takes the agent's own well-being, but also the well-being of genetically related individuals into account. And we study the effect of this on the resulting social dynamics. To quantify genetic relatedness, we propose a metric of information similarity between genotypes. In information theory, the having distance between two sequences is the number of positions at which corresponding entries are different, measuring the amount of substitution needed to change one sequence back into the other. Starting from the Hamming distance, we designed a Hamming similarity metric, expressing the genetic relatedness between two agents as a real number between zero and one. The definition of the Hamming similarity is shown at the top, where capital H is the Hamming distance, delta is a chronic delta, and we sum over the corresponding genes. Next, we modify the individual reward of each agent by adding the rewards of the other agents as well, weighted by their Hamming similarity to the agents. We call this modified reward the inclusive reward, as an adaptation of William Hamilton's well-known inclusive fitness theory from biology, which posits that natural selection favors organisms that help their genetic relatives. For now, we have tested two scenarios where independent Q-learners play prisoner dilemmas on networks. Self-interested agents often fail to cooperate in prisoner dilemmas due to the dominance of the defective strategy over cooperation. In nature, however, many organisms have evolved stable cooperative strategies. So the goal of these experiments is to investigate the effect of the inclusive reward on the social dynamics between agents. A first experiment considers fully connected networks where agents can recognize each other, which is called opponent discrimination. An agent knows against which opponent it is playing, but it does not know what genotype the opponent has, nor does it directly remember anything of what the agent did in the past. It only bases its actions on the learned behavior for that opponent. This scenario is inspired by the evolution of sensing organs, which provide an organism the ability to observe other organisms in the environment, but not directly their genotype. After training the agents in our network, we can see from the left figure that they spontaneously learn to cooperate with other agents that have a having similarity with them that is larger or equal than the cost of cooperation divided by the benefit of cooperation, which coincides very nicely with Hamilton's rule from biology. A second experiment gives an agent no opponent discrimination, which means agents have only one strategy for all interactions. Here, we look at the effect of limited dispersal on the emergence of cooperation between agents. In biology, under the limited dispersal hypothesis, it is assumed that organisms do not disperse far from their birthplace, making them more likely to interact with genetic relatives. To model limited dispersal, we move from fully connected networks to random partition networks with community structure. The results, shown here on the right, produce higher proportions of cooperation with the reclusive rewards than with individual rewards even though some level of cooperation can emerge without inclusiveness in accordance with previous work on network games. Small dispersal coefficients and large benefit to cost ratios also lead to higher levels of cooperation, which matches with our prediction based on limited dispersal theory. The experiments presented here show a first step into the development of a multi-agent autocurriculum based on ideas from social evolution theory. We've established that our inclusive reward can lead to more cooperation in biologically inspired environments, where we've used the well-known prisoner dilemma as a model for biological interactions and payoffs, which is common in the literature. However, this is a very simple model without any room for improvement in strategic complexity. We therefore propose to move towards a more open-ended, video game-like environment in future work, which will be an adapted version of Neural MMO, created by Suarez et al where agents can freely roam in a segment of natural terrain with the goal of ensuring the survival of their genetic material. 
Agents can have offspring and have to gather food and water or engage in combat against other agents to defend themselves, for example. In this world, we expect to see an arms race of strategies emerging where each new strategy will be a gradual improvement in response to a new innovation from other agents, effectively creating a multi-agent autocurriculum. Again, the survival of an agent's own genes will also include helping out other agents with similar genotypes. And a spectrum of cooperation will emerge, which is non-stationary due to the finite resources in the environment and changing population distributions over time. We intend to prove with this experiment that in sufficiently rich environments, like our version of neural MMO, our approach can show the emergence of increasingly advanced strategies where agents learn to balance cooperative and competitive incentives in more complex and dynamic setups than previous work, where agents were often confined to predefined team setups that did not change over time and did not entail the social intricacies that actual evolution had. We argue this could be a major building block towards building more advanced, socially intelligent agents. This concludes my high-level overview. For further details, we invite you to read our full paper or we welcome you at our poster. Thank you.